All right, so we got a um, Mark 52 bed off a Prusa assembled machine that was misbehaving. Um, looks like what happened was the uh, cable kind of got stuck underneath the machine, and so when it was rotating back and forth, it was just kind of causing stress on there. So, I mean, even though I've already reproduced the issue uh, on the machine and I'm getting ready to swap the thermistor, I thought it might just be handy to kind of show you guys what this looks like. So I'm just going to set this to ohms. And, um, you know, 150 is about what you should expect to see on the resistor uh, when everything's working correctly. And, oh, what, what happened there? Oh, that's not right. Let's see if we can do that again. Pretty stable, looking good. And then obviously it's responding right now, so it's going to change resistance as I touch it. But we should be nice and stable around 100K. But as I tweak this thing, oh no. Oh, now it's good. Oh no. Oh no. So when this happens, this is what causes the thermal runaway. The the value of the resistance changes as the heat gets applied, the resistance goes down. Okay? So when it gets hotter, it gets less resistance. Alright? So when you break and it goes way down or way up in resistance, the machine responds appropriately. You know, so it, it cuts off the heat, and then as it sees it jump, it mm, if basically the temperature it's trying to hit, if it falls outside of the window of where it's trying to be, if it's not following correctly, it causes a, a hysteresis error. So you know, the temperature's trying to increase, and if it doesn't increase within a particular time frame, like it's increasing too slow compared to the rate, then the machine shuts off and you get these temp errors. But this is because of a physical issue, so you know we're gonna swap it. No big deal. So anyway, basics are, you know, you got to remove the bed out and then you're going to remove the little holder dingus. Remove your sleeving. Oh, hey, look at that. It's not twisted. Okay, and we are going to attempt to save this capped on tape. Extricate that. I've got some more tin tape, so I'm not going to worry about this. And then it looks like we routed it sort of in the crotch of those cables, which I haven't seen before, but okay. And yeah, this thing just got pinched. So I'll swap in the replacement. All right, so we got the old sensor off, and I'm just taking a look at things, and I'm really not liking the kinks that I'm seeing in this cable, so I'm going to go ahead and swap that as well since I've got that in stock. So that is just going to be a matter of undoing the screw on the bottom there and then the two lugs. So this will remove... clamp and then if we can get a bite on these then we can loosen them Your washers absolutely must go on top of the lugs. If you make a mistake and you manage to put them underneath, well, guess what? The stainless steel is not very conductive. So you're going to get some heat buildup and probably melt your connector there. So do yourself a favor and make sure you do this step right. The uh, screw head, then the washer, then the lug, and then you need to make sure that there's a nylock on the bottom. Those are the ones with the little plastic bit in there. Bend these 
those down. Flush. Now we can go ahead and reinstall this. situate in there. All right, so we got our bed wire swapped on. Now we're going to install our replacement bed thermistor. So the way this works is uh, they just flare out the wires just to keep it flush on the bed, I guess. And then uh, it's going to go right on that little spot right there. That's what you're going for. And um, I'll just... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go grab myself a piece of tin tape. I'll be back here. I'm going to keep this one for a field repair. Hang on. I keep plenty of the good stuff in hand, so you can just cut this stuff. Some reasonable quality shears. So, anyway. Place your sensor so that the uh, actual thermistor element is in the little circle. That's going to get sealed basically with the tin tape, oil tape. And that's just to provide good thermal insulation and good physical contact with the bed. And then the capped on wasn't damaged, so we're actually going to reuse that. And that, once again, is just to provide additional thermal insulation and mechanical stability to the thermistor retention. And now our thermistor is repaired, but we do need to complete the installation by properly securing our wires, which you know, we've seen it happen. <clears throat> if you don't twist the wires, uh, just from the effects of friction, they can cheat themselves all the way out of the machine. Like literally, it will just suck this out to here, and then you'll start getting errors. And it doesn't actually damage the sensor. It just, uh, you know, don't work. And you're like, where did my thermistor go? Well, it's inside of your harness. So, anywho, what you want to do is just provide some twist inside of here. And then that's going to prevent that cable from going for a ride. And um, I'll try to be kind of particular about keeping it flat against the power wire. And then I have a secret weapon. This is just a little thing for installing the harness sleeving. So I'm going to go like this. As long as it's twisted most of the way, that's going to be adequate. And you want to make sure you're getting enough relief inside of the connector. And then I like to go back and forth a couple times just to make sure that the sleeving is indexed properly. There we go. So now we've got enough of a window in there. That little overhang is going to be just fine. So now we can install the clip portion. Making sure we've got that tucked in there, retained properly. Pinched in the retention. So cool. There we go. Bed's all repaired. Harness is all ready to go back on the machine. Looking good. Next up, reinstallation. 
All right, bed's all fixed up. Now we just need to reinstall and we use a somewhat uh, controversial bed installation technique, but um, it works for us. So. I would advise you to follow the instructions in the manual, but this is how we roll. So you get those nine spacers on there where they go. And then get your bed. Making sure your harness doesn't go and knock your things off. And then I spot the top left. the middle and the bottom right, oops. My harness cable is moving one of those guys around. So, let's try that again. Harness cable out of the way. Spot the upper left. Middle, bottom right. With our bed reinstalled on the top and our fasteners nice and tight, all we need to do is reconnect our wiring. I like to secure the harness first. See what I was doing there. Painter on there. Simply a matter of reconnecting the power wires. Negative on the outside, positive towards the frame. Making sure to support. Finally, reconnecting your bed thermistor, which goes on the left of the three possible receptacles. That is all messy. Acetone, pure acetone. Acetone and denatonium benzoate. This is what you need to use to clean the bed. This refreshes the surface. Alcohol is fine. 90% alcohol is fine. It will clean the bed. This restores the bed. This cleans the bed. This is what you need. This is good. This is better. covered in mess. So in this case, so I don't waste my acetone. This thing needs a bath. Get rid of this glue stick on here.
<laughs> so just to recalibrate Z, I'm just going to zero out. Calibration. Actually, before I do that, because we've been working on the machine, it's kind of more critical that we run a calibrate Z. Pretty good to me. Nothing on the nozzle. What we want to see, nice smooth top, nice consistent, should we have good stick, Let's see that's clearly pretty good stick, and that's all because of the acetone. This is all a contiguous piece, it shouldn't separate, nice flat top, that's what we're going for. Good cow, good fix. Thanks for watching. Thank you.